This podcast is brought to you by the self-publishing formulas Facebook Ads for Authors Premium Course. Registration opens on the 3rd of June for a limited time. To join the waiting list and to get a free masterclass on using Facebook ads to increase your author mailing list, you can visit selfpublishingformula.com. Hello and welcome to episode 13 from the Self Publishing Formula podcast. Two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Yes, lucky 13. Here we are, James Blatch, Mark Dawson for the Self Publishing Formula podcast on what is a lovely sunny day here in the UK. And it's so sunny and lovely that I can tell you somebody is mowing their lawn quite close to where I am. You might be able to hear murbling in the background. That's not my stomach. Can you hear it? Just a yeah. little bit. Okay. Is it all nice and peaceful? You've just got birdsong in Salisbury where you are. We don't have people doing unsocial things like mowing their lawns. It's all very rustic and rural here. Well, it's a trek to go past, possibly. It is a weekday. In Germany, it's illegal to mow your lawn on a Sunday. At least it used to be. I don't know if it still is. Perhaps one of our German listeners could uh, could let us know. <laughs> but uh, I quite like that, I have to say. Anyway, stop, stop rambling, James. We have a reputation, I've noticed from feedback, of being quite forthright and perfunctory in the way that we do our podcast, which a lot of people appreciate. We get straight into the good stuff rather than lots of rambling, so we should probably stick to that. And this is going to be no exception, and we are going to get onto the subject of how to launch a book with a detailed look um, through Mark's very recent launch. But before we get on to that, Mark, just going to mention a couple of other things. We're going to hear from one of the self-publishing formula courses students next week, a guy called Adam Croft. We've mentioned Crofty a few times. He's had an absolutely fantastic year. I mean, I'll just give you a headline figure. He's gone from probably an annual income of twelve to fourteen thousand pounds. So knocking on the door of twenty thousand dollars, not bad. But his wife's working as a primary school teacher and you know he's basically been paying bills. This year he is predicted to gross a million pounds. And that's not an exaggeration. And that's uh, after he took the Facebook advertising course and really understood the power of Facebook ads. So a fantastic interview with him coming up. And we're going to trail ahead because Mark is securing Adam's services, we hope, for a live webinar. And I think you, Mark, and Adam together talking about how to use Facebook ads could be one of the most powerful and valuable webinars people are going to hear in 2016. No pressure. No, um, no. <laughs> it could be, yeah, be good. Adam's done amazingly well. It's, you know, it's quite likely he'll teach. In fact, he has taught me a few things about how uh, he's he's gone about having that incredible year. Some really cool things that he, he's done that I think we'll be able to share with listeners. So we're just in the process of setting that up now. So there'll be an email that will go out with, with links to the webinar. But I, I would advise when we do get that ready, that people jump on quickly because I think that will probably be quite full. Yeah, and that's going to be great. Uh, we've even noticed this week that um, Adam's been outselling Robert Galbraith, who is, of course, you might know, J.K. Rowling. It's a pretty good thing to see your book higher in the charts than J.K. Rowling. So very excited about that. And also just want to mention that, Mark, you were live on Friday night. I was watching you. I had a beer in hand. I noticed you had a beer as well. You didn't have your gin and tonic as usual. Um, that's our <laughs> Facebook Live Q&A, which people can get through the Self-Publishing Formula Facebook page. And it uh, went really well. It was so busy. Yeah, it was really busy. I, again, for the second time, it was over an hour long and, and lots of people stuck around for the whole hour. I don't know how many questions I answered, but it was certainly three figures worth so yeah really fun it's nice to be able to, to do that there's no cost anyone can kind of uh turn up ask me a question tell me i'm an idiot if they want to no it's been it's been very very entertaining and i, I think i've managed to give some some useful information at least i hope i have to people who, who were there to listen into what i had to say and now this week also we're going to be interviewing uh, bookbub which i know is a very hotly anticipated podcast we haven't got a release date for it yet but we've got a lot of your questions all ready to go on that, and that's going to be one coming up in the future. Okay, let's, uh, in a perfunctory manner, get straight on to our hot topic, which is how to launch a book. Now, Mark, I have to say you've become, from a, a student of radio, you very quickly seem to have adopted and perfected this style. I was very, very impressed with the fact that you recorded this um, diary, effectively, a day-by-day -day diary of how your launch went. Uh, it's really, really interesting. I was editing it, and I was learning loads listening to uh, your approach and looking at the figures and how you schedule things out. 
And so I think without further ado, we're going to go into this. It's probably about 20 minutes long, something like that, perhaps a little shorter. It's really, really useful. We're going to listen to it now, and then Mark and I will pick up uh, from the last diary entry that Mark made at the end of it and go through the latest on the launch, and I shall be quizzing you a little bit more about that. Okay, so it is Wednesday the 27th of April 2016. Um, It's uh, 10 to 3. And I've just um, finished the uh, kind of polished first draft of the new John Milton book, which is going to be called The Jungle. And I've just sent it over um, to Canada, where my proofreader lives. And uh, she's a a lady called Pauline. And she's going to be uh, giving the manuscript a, a kind of a quick pass to clear up the obvious errors before I send it out to my beta team. I'm hoping to get it back after the weekend on Monday. So that's when the book should go out to the beta team, um, kind of sometime, probably close of play on Monday, once I've had a chance to look through Pauline's changes um, and make a few tweaks. I'm adding a couple of paragraphs, a couple of scenes I just want to add in subsequently and sending it over to her. So they'll get it on um, Monday. So that will be... um, the next stage in the process, but it starts today. Day one is uh, Wednesday, 27th of April, and I've just pressed send. So I'll be back on Monday to tell you um, what's next. Okay, so it's Tuesday, 3rd of April, uh, which is day six in this launch campaign. I've uh, received the manuscript back from my proof editor and I've gone through it, um, amended, accepted the changes that have been suggested to me, made a few extra tweaks, added a new um, opening paragraph that I'm quite pleased with. And I'm, uh, I've just composed the, uh, the MailChimp email sending to my advanced team. And at the time of uh, this recording, there are 728 people on the advanced team um, and they're going to get the uh, the formatted book in uh, whatever format they want. So Mobi, EPUB or PDF. Um, and I'm, I'm giving it to them by way of um, a, a MailChimp hosted link to so the file hosted by MailChimp and clickable by people when they get the email or also with BookFunnel, the service that I recommend um, when it comes to uh, allowing downloading of free books that we give away in exchange for email addresses. So that all being said, uh, the email is ready to go. Um, I am keen to get this off, so I'm going to press send and I'll, uh, I'll come back again tomorrow and let you know how it's gone. It's day seven, Wednesday the 4th of April. Um, So I sent the uh, manuscript out to the advance team last night or last afternoon. And uh, as I said, uh, 728 members, so it got sent that many times. The open rate was 74% and the click rate was 53%. So that's largely what I'd expect um, given how the team has reacted to previous um, uh, campaigns. What I have done this morning is just go back through MailChimp and uh, created a new segment of people who haven't opened any of the last five campaigns. And I've uh, I've assumed that they're not interested anymore. So I've deleted them from the uh, advanced team and I may or may not look to recruit um, some new ones. I took off about 50, I think. So we're under seven, under 700 now, about 660, 670 left, which let's be honest, is still plenty. But I, I may look to add a few more to bring that back up to 700 again. Um, so yeah, the numbers, the open rate and the click rate was very good. And um, overnight, I've had the first, I think, four or five um, comments back or emails back. Two or three of them have actually read the book and have said very nice things, which is great for my ego, of course. Um, and the others have come back with some um, some small points that have slipped through the, the proofing process so far. So what I do is I put them into their own um, folder and I collate them and then I go back and do everything in one blast a bit nearer the end of the process. But um, I'm very pleased with, with how things have gone. Uh, the, I'm always nervous when I send out a book for the first time because at, at this point only one other person being the proofreader has, has read the book and although you know she said that she enjoyed it, you kind of think you're saying that because we have a commercial relationship. But these, these readers uh, will tell me if they don't like what I've done with Milton and the early feedback so far has been good. So that is of course a big relief. So um, that's cool. I, I kind of let that run now for a few more days and I'll check back in later with, uh, with an update.
Okay, back again. It's day 13, Thursday the 12th of May. Um, and I had the copy edited manuscript come back today, a day early from my copy editor in Canada. Um, so I spent um, most of today going through those changes. Usually it's straightforward, um, nothing controversial. I agree almost always with the vast majority of the changes. So that has been great. Um, and I've also taken the opportunity to um, have paused and kind of marinated on the manuscript until now. So I've been receiving lots and lots of comments back from my advanced readers. I haven't counted it up exactly, but it's something like 50 or 60 emails have come back from, from the team with um, uh, suggestions. And more than 50 or 60 have responded. Um, so I'm just saying I really enjoyed the book. Looking forward to being able to help out. But the, uh, the 50 or 60 actually have suggestions and amendments to make. So I've been storing those up in a separate folder um, and I haven't touched the, uh, the actual manuscript. I'm working in Word now. I haven't touched it because I wanted, wanted to make sure that the copy edit came back and I'll then work uh, from that document alone, the copy edited document. Um, now that I've got that back, I'm, I'm spending the day going through uh, the manuscript and, and looking at those comments and amendments from readers. And they've been really, really great. Um, they've solved a, a problem that was giving me practical problems towards the end of the book with, uh, with Milton needing to cause a big explosion. Um, I've had some really clever ideas for that, some things I hadn't come up with myself. So that's been fantastic. And the process, I always love doing this. It's my favorite part of the process going through and editing. And I think the manuscript is now very tight and strong, um, so much so that it's possible uh, that I'll be uh, slightly ahead of schedule and I might even launch the book a day or two earlier. I was scheduling um, the 20th of May, a Friday. It might be that I come forwards to the 18th or 19th, but, but we'll see. So I'm going to spend uh, the rest of the day going through these comments and then uh, I'll check back in tomorrow because I'm going to start the uh, promotion to my list and my Facebook group. So it is Saturday the 14th of May. Um, it's a lovely day here in uh, sunny Wiltshire. Just taking my son for a walk down the country lane near our house and I thought I'd check in with another report. So yesterday was a really good day. Um, I sent out um, emails to all of my mailing list with a cover reveal and also um, I checked in the first uh, a kind of sneak peek to the prologue of the new book and I also amplified that by doing the same on Facebook. So I put the cover up and the uh, the prologue and put that in on my Facebook page. And I had a really, really positive response. Um, I got dozens and dozens of emails from readers, which was excellent. Most people saying that they were looking forward to, to buying the book when it comes out. Um, I put pre-order links in the email for Apple, Barnes & Noble and Kobo. And I made it really clear why I wasn't pre-ordering through Amazon. Um, people have different views on this, but it doesn't help my launch strategy because of the way that Amazon tallies up pre-orders. Um, in, in my opinion, it reduces the effect of a launch. But even though I made that pretty clear, and in fact, the, the explanation of why there were no Amazon pre-orders was in bold, I got quite a lot, maybe 30 emails from readers um, saying that they'd, they'd been onto Amazon and hadn't been able to find the pre-order. On the one hand, that's quite flattering because they uh, are motivated to go and look for it. But on the other hand, it, it's a little frustrating. I made it pretty clear why that was. And of course, I answered all of those emails individually and told them just to hang around until next week when they'd be able to get it. Um, so that's a learning for me for next time. I'll, I'll be a bit more explicit. I may even not put any links on when I do those kinds of, uh, those kinds of teasers. Anyway, so uh, it was great. Um, the, the Facebook post was extensively shared, uh, two or 300 likes, I think, lots and lots of comments, everything pointing towards um, a positive launch next week, quite likely now to be pushed forward a bit because I'm ahead of schedule, but we'll see. But, um, I, I kind of, I'll close down for the weekend now, um, spend some time with the family, and then I'll look forward to getting ready to push this new book out next week.
Okay, so it's Monday the 16th. Um, I'm in my well, one of my cafes in Salisbury that I come to to do my writing. And I spent the last hour just going through the uh, final amendments that I want to make to the manuscript. And just a minute ago, I saved it again as a new file, uh, appending the word locked to it, which means uh, for me that, that that book is pretty much done. And I've emailed it across together with the cover to Polgaris Studios, the formatters that I use in Australia. Back with Jason over there, very, very highly recommended. Um, he will uh, do the formatting magic and uh, send that back to me probably tomorrow now. And then we can get the book loaded up to the relevant platforms and we'll be good to go to start sending it out to the advanced team, actually getting into the launch phase of, of this launch. So um, that's it uh, for me for today. Um, I've got this got, got that done and really looking forward to moving on to the next stage tomorrow. So it's Wednesday the 18th at 6.23pm. Um, I'm just running the bath for the children. You might hear the water running in the background. And I just wanted to check in and tell you that the first um, part of the soft launch, or the soft launch really has gone really, really well. Um, in the just over 48 hours since I've had the book live on both Amazon, in fact, all Amazons, um, I've had over 100 reviews on .com. I think about 25 reviews on .co.uk and uh, something like five and six and or 10 or 11 on uh, Canada and Australia, which is really excellent. Um, I mean, 100 reviews in the first couple of days, that's ridiculous. Um, they're all really good, honest reviews. Uh, most of them or a good number of them have left the the statement um, that the book was uh, was an ARC, an advanced copy. And I always put that in the email to just remind them that it's um, best practice to put that in. Um, but they've been honest. Um, not everyone likes it. There's a few um, kind of uh, less enthusiastic reviews, which is completely fine. But generally speaking, it's been very, very positive. And the book's product page, which did look a little bit bare and lonely when the book went live, now looks uh, busy. The blurb looks good. The cover looks good. And we've got all that social proof on the review. So that's uh, mission accomplished in terms of the soft launch. Also had about 200 buys. And I think that's pushed the book up to around about 1800 in the store. So that's a good platform that we'll be building on when we do the proper launch, which is likely to be tomorrow, I think. I've got a call with Apple this evening, the guys uh, in Cupertino, to have a chat about some promotion that they're going to be doing as the book launches. Um, and it's it's just looking really good. I'm very pleased with how things have gone so far. And I'll check back in maybe a couple of times tomorrow if we do the launch tomorrow so I can tell you um, what I do when the book actually fires out to the mailing list and then the early results. Okay, Mark again. It's the 19th of May 2016 at 12.45 um, and... I've been busy this morning just putting the final touches to my launch emails and I've just finished clicking send on the last one. So right now around about 50,000 emails are either queued at MailChimp HQ or on their way to the people on my mailing list. Um, so it's, it's always, this is one of the most exciting parts of a launch. Um, it's, been, it's been soft launch for a couple of days, but now I'm telling everyone on my mailing list that the book is out there and uh, encouraging them to go and buy it, to share the email. Uh, get their friends and family to buy it um, and uh, we'll see how we do so the, the price is up now to its launch price 4.99 in the us 3.99 in the UA, uk and uh, us rank is um, at the time of recording is 3749 in the store um, and that's off the back of 247 sales over the last three days um, and most of those will be at 99 cents a few of those are at 4.99 I saw overnight that a few people in my Facebook group had seen that um, the book had gone live. Um, it's been soft launch so far, so I haven't told anybody officially, but a few people have noticed and the word spread. So um, today was definitely the right day to do the uh, start of the um, sales sequence. And right now we've got 107 reviews on the uh, US page, and that's all gonna be from the launch team really good um i'm very pleased with that it's 92 uh, percent five star eight percent at four star 
We'll get lots more coming in there at 3, 2, and 1, and I'm completely fine with that. I like to see a nice spread of reviews on a page. Quite happy to get um, honest reviews from, from, from all readers, advanced readers or not, um, depending on, on how they like the book and being honest and telling other readers about it. So that will give a bit more balance to the, the page, but right now I'm very pleased with that as a platform for the uh, the book to to go out so i will check back in a bit later to let you know how the uh, the emails have been going down but as of right now i'm pretty excited okay so it is the 20th so it's friday the 20th of may um it's uh 13 minutes past three in the afternoon and uh i thought i'd check back in with results of how the first day of the launch went. And the quick answer is it went really, really well. Um, it was the most successful launch that I've ever done. The best I've done previously, I think was up to about 102 in the dot-com store. But uh, The Jungle yesterday sold uh, 1,637 copies in the US and 809 copies in the UK. And that was good for an overnight rank in the US of number 80 in the store and 49 in the UK store. So I'm really pleased with that. My kind of aim, my unofficial aim was to crack the top 100 with this launch and um, I've managed to do that. Very, very pleased with, with how it went. Um, that's that's just on the basis of uh, mailing list sales. So I've had a very, very good response from uh, the mailing list, good open rates, good click rates, and loads and loads and loads of emails and Facebook messages from uh, readers who took to do, kind of uh, getting in touch with me to tell me that they'd bought the book and that they'd either finished it and left a review or they, they were enjoying it or they were about to start it. Uh, really good for the ego. Um, and uh, obviously I've replied to all of those. Um, and, um, that's been, that's been really uh, gratifying. So what I've been doing today is I'm starting to amplify the, uh, the effect of that, um, that burst of sales yesterday. And I'm doing that in two ways. The first way is with Facebook ads. So what I've done, and this I suppose is about as clever as it gets from me, is I've um, uploaded my mailing list. So you know, around about 50,000 people. I've um, pulled those out as a spreadsheet, uploaded them into Facebook, and then told Facebook that I want to serve ads just to those people. And I think the number of uh, people on that list who had Facebook accounts was around about 29,000. Um, and I'm now serving ads, very simple ads with a, a, the graphic from or the cover from uh, The Jungle with a little bit of the blurb and just saying that it's on its launch price of $4.99 for the next few days. And I'm sending those out. The reason I do that is because um, although my open rates are typically pretty good, uh, 30 or 40% open rate, which is, is well above industry average, that's that's still leaving 60% of people who aren't getting or aren't opening those emails. Now, that might be because they just don't open those kinds of emails. It might be because they've gone into spam or they've gone into promotions if they're on Gmail. So what this does is just gives me another way to reach them. So maybe they're more, um, yeah, they're, they're more open to receiving that kind of notification by way of something in their newsfeed on Facebook. So there's that. There's also a benefit in repeating a message. So let's say, for example, I received an email from a, a, a writer yesterday. Um, I saw it whilst I was in a queue or, and um, I, I got to the end of the queue. Um, and by that time I was distracted, wasn't um, able to make the purchase of the book that perhaps I would have done. It's useful in that case to just reinforce that message and give them a second chance to buy. And then there's also um, the, the advertising theory, seven touches, which suggests that you need to see something sometimes up to seven times before you're put into the mood to, to buy something. So this is just another touch which I can amplify with a Facebook live video. I've been doing a lot of that over the last two or three days. Uh, it's great for organic reach um, with mailing list, um, shout outs. Um, and then when that Amazon gets involved, the book will start to appear in also boards. Amazon will start to email out now to my fans, um, BookBub ads um, or BookBub's new launch emails. There's loads and loads of ways you can amplify that message. And Facebook ads are a really, really good one. So I'll be checking in to see how effective those ads have been. I would suspect um, going on past experience that the return on those will be between 50 and 100 percent in terms of the cost of advertising. I think I spent about $150 yesterday and I'll spend about the same today. I'd expect to, to kind of almost double that, I would have thought, um, in terms of sales, perhaps a bit more than that. 
Um, and of course, every one of those cells is helping to maintain that rank for, um, for a little bit longer. So as I record this right now, I'm still in the top 100 at number 99 in the States. That will start to drift down now, um, but it will, it will be in the top few hundred for uh, for a while yet for two or three days I would expect perhaps a bit longer than that so anyway just to sum up it's been a really good launch um, when you kind of look back at it it is pretty busy there's lots of things to do lots of moving parts to keep an eye on but I am very pleased with with how it's uh, worked out it's the best launch I've had um, and I will be gathering some information on sales on other platforms I think I've had quite a few sales on Apple, uh, a good number, like 150 or so on Kobo. And I would expect a, a similar number, perhaps a bit more on Barnes & Noble. Um, it's still quite possible that I've had enough sales to hit a list, but of course I'll, I'll, we'll see and I'll let you know. There we go. Radio reporter Mark Dawson. Did it, did it feel like you're sort of radio reporter? I've had a good teacher, James. You have. Um, I, I have one bit of technical feedback for you, which I forgot to tell you. Right. I can tell you now because I know lots of people are interested in, in podcasting and not everybody has spent sort of 15 years in radio like I did before. But uh, you recorded a couple of your bits in a very noisy environment, in which yes. case you need to speak really loudly into the microphone. And you did a combination of a noisy environment and a quite quiet voice. So... I had to work, and then we have a technical guy who's going to work on that as well to try and make sure it's listenable too. But um, I thought you did that with that one small piece of negative feedback. Apart from <laughs> that, I think you did extremely well. And yeah, you might get a job on Radio Blatch when I start the station. <laughs> no, okay. It was fun. It was good. It was good fun to do that. I've been meaning to do something like that for a little while, so it was quite nice to get my thoughts down whilst they were fresh. Okay, well, we should timestamp this. We don't normally do that because obviously this goes out a little later, but it's, uh, it is currently my Apple Watch has suddenly decided to give me a notification. It's the 23rd of May. So where are you now in terms of totting up sales? So in, let's have a little look. So in total sales, um, I mean, it went very, very well. My aim unofficially, I didn't push this about too much because I didn't want to set myself up for a fall, but I wanted to hit the top 100 in, in Amazon US. Haven't done that before. I got to 102 with a previous book. And as I mentioned in, well, I don't think I did actually mention this because this was subsequent to the last podcast or the last diary entry, but it got up to number 80 overall in the US, which was was great. I got to um, number 49 in the UK, so hit the top top 50. And it's still going quite strong. So still within the top 250 in the US. And I, I'm not sure in the UK, but I think it'll be within the top 150. But in terms of total sales, it, it sold 2,507 copies in the US, uh, 1,228 copies in the UK, and 1,100 on Apple and 156 on Barnes & Noble. But the Apple one was cool. It was number two in the whole world for a little bit. Wow. Um, a day or two after release. So that was, I had some really semi screen grabs with that at number two in the, in the world, which was pretty amazing. Yeah, that's really good. I know you have a great relationship with Apple and I, I'm starting to see why uh, they like you so much. <laughs> that's, that's really good. Just remind us of the cover price. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, how much is actually gross, but it was, uh, it was 4.99. So, uh, 70% of that. Yeah. So uh you get a calculator out, but that's um I mean it's Yes, I'm sure we can three thousand three seven four eight it's about five thousand ish copies sold. So seventeen thousand dollars to me, um, in terms of the seventy percent royalty. So that's pretty good for you know, a week's work. Yeah. Yeah, well, more, a little more than a week's more, work. More than that, maybe, <laughs> yes, yes. But in terms of the launch itself. Okay, well, let us uh, it was very interesting to hear how the launch went. And uh, I can see potentially at, at some point a future module, maybe in, in one of our courses on this very specific subject, because you have choices. The formula you've got to has not been something you dreamt up three weeks ago. You've plowed your way through your series. I mean, every time you do it, every time you go through a launch, obviously you're perhaps looking to excel what you've done before but do you learn something new do you think about fine tuning it for next time yeah i'm always thinking about what what works and what didn't work last time so um i mean this time one thing i did one thing that i've i amplified from last time and then i've done a new thing this time that worked well and the thing that i did last time for the first time which i've spent a bit more money on um in terms of this launch was advertising on facebook um on for the actual launch itself so 
what I did was um, I upload um, my mailing list. So it's around about 50,000 strong now. So I upload that into Facebook. Um, and I think around about 30,000 of them have a Facebook profile. So I build a custom audience of the, those 30,000 people. And then um, I add into that people on my Facebook page. So there's about another 20,000 on my Facebook page who've, who've liked the page. And then I advertise to them at the same time as I send out the mailing list emails. And the reason I do it like that is there's a, there's a few reasons, really. Some of those emails won't get opened. It's just a, you know, a, a fairly standard situation with email marketing in that if you're getting over 35, 40% open rate, you're doing quite well. But that means that 60% of the people who get the email or who sent the email don't ever see it, don't open it. It could go to spam. They might not open it for another reason, whatever. So your message isn't getting over to them. So I can reach them through other other means and Facebook ads directly into their newsfeed is, is a very good way of doing that. So that's that's number one. Um, I think just to dwell on that for a second, mm. I think some people potentially will think that that's the end of it. You know, if, if 77 out of 10 people haven't opened it, they'll think, well, you've seen the email, they, they're not interested and leave them. But actually, traditional marketing analysis will tell you, and I don't like to use this expression, but it's an expression that gets used, is that they're actually low-hanging fruit. They're people mm. who are already familiar with the product, who've made a decision to be on your list, and you should not be negative about them. And finding out that rather inventive way of, of using them, which is then to slip the advert into their Facebook feed, is a, is a perfect example of how, how well to leverage that. Yeah, exactly. And and you can get some another way as well. I mean, one thing I always do make a week or two weeks after launch is to send another email out and change that. Just send it to the unopeners and change the headline. Uh, because sometimes it's the headline that triggers spam filters. Um, so it's good to try a variation on that. So I'll do that. And I'll, I'll usually add, uh, you know, add another 10% who'll open that one. And then maybe 50% of them will buy the book. So you, you, you can continue to advertise to them. But the, the, I mean, the Facebook point, apart from covering those people who don't open the email, there's no bad thing in um, sending a repeat message to someone who would be interested in buying because the, when they open the email, for example, all the other way around, when they see the Facebook message, they might not be in a position physically to be able to buy something. Perhaps they are uh, just at a queue uh, or a line in the States waiting to pay for something and then they get to the get to the front and they're distracted by doing what they were waiting to do. So they, they forget that they, they were going to buy the book. Maybe it was another just a bad, it was a bad time. They weren't prepared to, to make the purchase at that time. We go back to that whole seven, seven touches of advertising theory that it can take up to seven touches before someone is put into the place, the kind of mental space where they're ready to make a purchase. So with a mailing list email, with Facebook, with Facebook uh, normal messages, videos that I've done, I can amplify my message extensively and, and get it into people's consciousness that there's a new book that they'll probably like ready for them to buy. Okay. Did anything go wrong with your launch this time? It did actually. Yes. Um, I, this happened to me once before and, um, writers listening will be familiar with this. Amazon has started to crack down on reviews that it thinks are, uh, illegitimate is the wrong word for sure, but Amazon has some kind of algorithmic process whereby they, they believe they can detect relationships between reviewers on the one hand and writers on the other hand. So when I would launch to my, my team, my soft launch to get reviews, uh, I mentioned in the diary that I had over a hundred reviews within the first 36 hours or so. And then I checked in just before I went to hard launch or possibly just after, I can't remember exactly when it was. And, and that number had been culled down to 70. So around about 40 had been taken off. And that did happen to me before with the last launch, but they all came back again quite quickly. And But this time they haven't come back, which is on the one hand, it's well, actually there isn't a question of being on the one hand. It is just quite annoying um, because there's no relationship between me and those reviewers apart from the fact that they are on my advanced team I, mean, I don't know them they're not related to me you know we're friends in the sense that I, I value them as as part of my team and but it, and it isn't as if anything there's anything uh, wrong about doing things that way it's something that traditional publishers do all the time sending out advanced copies indies have been doing it now for two or three years and it just seems right now to me that um indies are bearing the brunt of some kind of skeevy behavior that uh, that other less reputable authors and, and marketers are, are getting into with re regards to fake reviews. So annoying. Um, was it a, was it a massive problem? No, because I had enough reviews to cover off that situation. But it didn't, it, it's not pleasing to me when the effort that some of my advanced readers have gone into is just removed for what can only really, I, I can only see as an arbitrary reason. Yeah, okay. In terms of what else you did alongside the main points that you've talked about in the launch, what sort of other, were there 
parallel marketing exercises that you embarked on? Yeah, I mean, I, I just before we, we move on to that, I just I, I forgot to mention the the numbers for the Facebook ad campaign. So I, you know, I'm pretty open on on what I spend and what I make, and so I think it would be useful for people to see how profitable that campaign was. So I've, I'm still running it, but I've got two days worth of data to share right now, and that those first two days, so the day of launch, and then I think it was the Saturday, um, I spent two hundred and sixty dollars and nine cents on that campaign and made five hundred and sixty two dollars and thirty seven cents. So that's a return on investment of 116%. So that's absolutely not to be uh, sniffed at. And the conversion percentage on those campaigns was as, as high as 50% sometimes. So so um, what period was that over? That was just two days. That's so two the, days, the, okay. the first day and the second day. So I'm spending, well, you can see about a, just over $100 a day at the moment on those ads. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the other thing I tried for the first time, which I hadn't done before, was to have a launch party. So Facebook live video has been rolled out extensively now. So I've always had it on my, on my page. Obviously we've got it on the SPF page now, which is the, is the facility that we use for our Friday night chats. But I, I mean, I, I speak quite regularly on, on video to my author page, the fans on, on that page. And I did something in advance. So I scheduled Saturday at 10 PM UK time, 5 PM Eastern to do um, kind of a, what I called a launch party. And I advertised that in advance. I did uh, plenty of other videos to get really high organic reach to just to tell people that I would be there to answer questions and also to do a giveaway. So I, I gave away, um, I don't know if you were there when this happened, James, but when I was at London Book Fair, Amazon gave me a Kindle to sign. Yeah, I say, well, I saw the picture of you about to yeah. deface a Kindle with a pen, and I assumed <laughs> it was just someone who'd made a mistake in terms of setting up the photograph, but this was real a real thing, was it? Yeah, it was. It wasn't, and it wasn't a pen. It was what I think they would call it a Dremel machine or something like, like that, but it's basically like a dentist drill. So I engraved <laughs> onto, the back, onto the back of this Kindle my name, basically ruined it. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I offered that as a, as a giveaway, as a competition giveaway. And the entry to enter, it was pretty simple to enter. You just had to buy a book and tell me, email the, uh, I think it was the first word of the 40th chapter. So something that you would only be able to find out if you had a copy of the book. So that's encouraging sales in itself. But for the, I was there for, for an hour on Saturday night with a beer and answered questions from readers. And I mean, apart from the fact that it was, it was really enjoyable. It was kind of like bathing in, good wishes because uh, everyone there was was a reader was a fan of, of my stuff and they were saying some very nice things which was that was very pleasant um but in kind of practical commercial terms i think it was like nearly thirteen thousand unique viewers turned up over the course of that hour um so they were you know getting to know about the new book f- forging a deeper connection with me which was is great i'm all, all for that and then because of the fact that it had really really high organic reach lots of comments lots of shares lots of likes and and you know all that kind of stuff the organic reach on it was 206,000 people so that's a significant mm. i mean it's actually if you sat down and worked out how much that would cost as a media buy you're looking at 20 or 30,000 pounds i would have i would have estimated well, just think about how much it would have cost on a book tour to reach 200,000 of your readers yeah exactly and how much of a so, faff that would have been yeah exactly i did it all from from my desk so it was i mean it was a it was a resounding success i don't know how many i sold then but um it was even if i sold none i would have been quite happy to just have been around to uh just answer reader questions because you know i've got some lovely comments and it, it's much more likely that those people will be a, will stick around for the long haul now and will buy other books that i, I put out Mm, that sounds really good. You're you're generally happy then with the way the launch went. You must be getting uh, particularly getting uh, so high in the US charts on Apple. Yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled about it. And I mean, like today, we'll see. It's not finished yet either. So there's um, Apple are tweeting out um, something about about the book. I think at about five o'clock UK time, and that's going out to an audience of about two two and a half million. So you know that, that's that's something. That, I mean, that's not something that's available to everyone, but it is. It just kind of something I said in. I think the Friday night session, the the value of reaching out to and making personal contacts with with retailers, very I, important. I think it's also down to the fact of how hard you work and how focused you are on marketing. Because if I was Apple, it's not simply somebody writes a good book and it's going to sell well. They're also looking for individuals who've got it, who who understand that marketing is is a slog and that you work hard and that you you work smart, and they like you for that. They like you because they know that you're doing your bit and they're going to support you on that front. So I think that's very much something authors need to bear in mind is is to be very proactive is to think actively about how they're going to sell their books what their marketing plan is and then it's going to be easier to make those relationships because you'll be doing the same thing you're complementing each other then from from amazon and apple and other sellers point of view 
Yeah, absolutely. It's um, everyone wins when when that kind of thing works well. So yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty. It couldn't have gone too much better. You know, and I've I've taken some good information away from this launch, and I'll, I'll I'll use that again when I when I launch. I've actually got another launch next month on a Thomas and Mercer book, so that will be interesting because that will get the combined push from Amazon, um, which obviously is very significant. And if I was to to fold that into this kind of campaign again, um, I mean, I'm very confident we'll do better than. Certainly in the UK, I should think top 10 is, is, a, is a pretty reasonable target. So okay. we'll see. And on to the ne- next book. Yeah, which I've already started. Yeah, I'm 10,000 words into the next one. So uh, okay. there's, there's no pausing. No. Brilliant. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much indeed for doing that. And um, uh, yes, my Padawan radio report is quickly becoming a master. And uh, <laughs> as I said uh, at the beginning, we are interviewing Adam Croft. Definitely not one to miss for inspirational reasons and for valuable insight reasons Adam's going to be a great interviewee for the next edition of the Self-Publishing Formula podcast. And uh, there's going to be the webinar with Adam coming up. We'll give you more details about that as soon as we firmed up those arrangements. And don't forget, Mark, you're going to be live again, beer in hand, on uh, tonight, Friday night. Friday night, yeah, at 10 p.m. UK, 5 p.m. Eastern. I may, I may change it up this time and go for traditional G&T. g and like. And just out of interest, what is your preferred gin? My preferred gin, mm. probably Hendrix, and my beer of choice at the moment is Asahi. Okay. <laughs> There we are. This podcast has not been brought to you by either Hendrix <laughs> or Asahi, but I guess we're probably open to offers in the future. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you, Mark. We will speak to you next week. Have a great week writing and selling. Bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Self Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.